have asked um, Mother Mary, um, the mother of the Savior, to um, answer some questions for me um, that I have regarding um, trying to get an understanding of the difference between the waters and how we have been interacting with the waters and how we should interact with the waters moving forward. Um, this is my baseline, yes, agree. Um, can you show me no, please? As you can see, no is for me counterclockwise. And uh, if you've seen any of my other pendulum bit videos, then you know that um, if no is counterclockwise, you're dealing with an entity that is on the positive side. But if your no is um, clockwise, everything is reversed, you're dealing with an entity from the other side, from mirror world, right? If we're upright, the other entities, the fallen entities are in the mirror world. So, um, all right, so now that we have that established, of course, I have, I'm trying to gain some understanding. So I'm just going to have this conversation and then um, give you an explanation. But um, I got the feeling that I should record and share this process so you can see um, how I do my line of questioning. And Mother Mary is um, a saint that I have been working with. Um, she has a lot of different names. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into all of that, but she has a lot of different names um, from different pantheons. Um, this is a woman um, who was a real person who birthed a savior, okay? And not by, um, the conception was immaculate um, because she was without sin. Um, and not because it was without a man. Um, and so part of my questioning is that, um, I wasn't gonna start with this, but this makes more sense. So from what I understand, or from what I have heard, I'm just trying to get some understanding. Is it that the men or the, the Leviathan, let's call it a Leviathan, is a Leviathan like the dark, the deep, the dark mothers or mother that um, God separated the light mother from? Is that a good way to understand what's going on here? Okay, so if the Leviathan, okay, so let's go back to the garden. All right, so was it that the light mother um, typically was the one that was communicating with Eve, meaning this the light mother would have been like Lilith in a um, whatever version, I mean, form she was in, right? Let's not get into what the forms were because that's a little bit above my pay grade. I need to do some more research. So let's say the light Lilith as the light mother, oh my freaking goodness, versus the Leviathan as the dark mother. Okay, all right, we got it. Okay, so... Lilith, right, was communicating with Eve, trying to explain to her how stuff goes. So she regularly was in communication with a mother. It wasn't the it wasn't the dark mother. It was the light mother, Lilith. And so this whole concept of the um, everyone being born with a twin, because I saw in the research. Um, that Cain and Abel, because Cain and Abel were both born with twins. It was two of them. They were both born as twins. Everyone was, maybe not everyone, but um, many people were born as twins at the time of that time, which is why the population increased so rapidly because so many people were born as twins. And so the story that I read um, much like Jacob and Esau, so this is how I know this is this is a, a common theme, and and they could have easily just left this out. 
um, Cain, no, Adam wanted Cain to marry Abel's twin and Abel to marry Cain's twin. That is what I read. And so um, Cain was very upset about that. He did not want that. He wanted to marry his own twin. So, be, so that is the reason why they gave a sacrifice to see which one God would accept. This is the part that's not quite in the Bible. I think it's in the... No, wait, that's not true? Okay, okay, let's go back. Let's go back. So, they gave the offering to get approval for from God. Now, which God? That's another thing. We can come back to that later. But they gave an offering to God to see if the plan of Adam was approved or if the plan of Cain was approved. So they were trying to get the approval from the God on which plan would be acceptable, which plan would produce the best result. And so Cain gave his sacrifice from the field. And as we know, the herb of the field was a curse. God cursed Adam to eat the herb of the field. And Abel gave the firstborn female and fat. Okay, so I do have a question about that. When Adam, when um, Abel bought his the firstborn female of the flock, was this an animal? Okay. Was the animal killed? The animal was killed and then the fat was burned. So it was it was a burnt offering. Abel gave a burnt offering of the animal and the fat. Okay. So because we know that God likes fat. The, 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 the smell, the aroma of the burning fat, that sacrifice was accepted and Cain's sacrifice of fruits and vegetables and crap was not accepted the same way as Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Because it says in the Bible that um, it makes it sound like in the Bible that both sacrifices were acceptable but Abel's sacrifice was the one that was like approved because when you do a sacrifice you burn whatever it is and then you consume it the sacrifice doesn't go without consuming you have to consume it so it's going to be accepted because you're going to eat it but the one that God found more favorable because he wanted to he wanted the plan of them not marrying their own twins um he accepted Abel's sacrifice now what that means I had to do some more research but I'm not going to get into all of that it's too complicated okay so now that I have that down So, let's go back to this issue of the waters. So, in one understanding of the waters being separated from the waters, is it that Mary, not Mary, the light waters, which was Lilith, was separated from the dark waters, which was the Leviathan? And so Lilith was regularly working with Eve until the Leviathan came in their 
with um you know and and made in implanted the idea that she could be as god and then she ate the apple and all of this stuff so it is my guesstimation that the only way to defeat the Leviathan is by a woman. Only a woman, only the woman can defeat the Leviathan. The man cannot defeat the Leviathan because just like the brother said, what does the most high, a male, look like beating up on a woman? That's That's outside of what's acceptable. So it has to be the women who fight the Leviathan. The men cannot fight the Leviathan. Okay. So if the women can fight the Leviathan, Is that why women have been attacked so heavily? Because this thing could only be defeated from within. And is it that we also defeat the Leviathan within ourselves? Because we are mostly made, we are made up of mostly water, this energetic fluid that is that is connected to this larger Leviathan. So if we can conquer ourselves, then we are conquering the Leviathan. But it is not the same with men. We have to cover our men in order for them to be able to conquer the Leviathan. Just like Mary Magdalene had to cover Yeshua, your son, with her great wealth so that he could indeed defeat the Leviathan. Or Elijah, when he went out into the um, woods, it was an angel more than likely a female angel that was able to cover him so that he could defeat the Leviathan that was rising up inside of him. You see over and over and over again that the men have to have some kind of help to defeat the Leviathan. Whereas the women are able to defeat the Leviathan on their own because what did Eve command? Eve told the Leviathan she was going to have to crawl around on her belly. And that was it. She was gone. She could no longer um, um, is this right? She could no longer I ain't right. She could no longer the Leviathan could no longer do what she was doing. Trick anybody by posing as the light mother. As Lilith. Which, so all the stories we've heard of, about Lilith are really the stories of the Leviathan. A lot of them. That's what the Leviathan was. The Leviathan was blood, babies, all that crap. Found to understand this correctly. Okay, so so the Leviathan is the Dark Mother, and the Dark Mother is who we have to defeat. The Dark Mother is the one that engages willingly in chaos magic, creating chaos. So you have water that is calm, supports life, all of that, that would be like the Light Mother. Then you have the Mother that does not support life, does not have any light shine on it because she does not like the light. The Dark Mother does not like the light because there is a story in Aradia about Lilith and Lucifer coming together, Lucifer being the light bearer, coming together with Lilith 
um, which that story must be told wrong because that means Lucifer and Lilith were not brother and sister. Anyway, and L Lilith wanted the light. Lilith was Lilith was obsessed with having the light. She wanted the light to be a part of her. And that is how she, um, uh, I need to go back and read that, um, Aradia, so I can get some more understanding. Okay, but as long as we understand, okay, so let me, let me ask this. If the Dark Mother is the one that we have to be concerned about right now, Okay, is a dark did Mommy Watas and her siblings use the Dark Mother for their rituals? Okay, yes. Okay, so our people <clears throat> in general that are trying to do chaos and create confusion and problems in general are they using the Leviathan energy under whatever name she comes to uses? Um, to actually um, do these things. Anybody who is, you know, engaged in this kind of chaos magic. Because what I feel like is, um, we're not using chaos magic. If you are just praying, if you're just asking your angels, your ancestors to help you, you have a pendulum out like this, and you're just asking questions, trying to get clarification, understanding, um, chaos magic involves, from my understanding, doing something against somebody else so that they can they can experience something that is outside of um, the will of God. Okay, this is what I was going to ask. Yeah, it is outside of the will of God, right? Okay, so this is what I was going to ask. If somebody has like good intentions right and they do chaos magic not against somebody but to get something for themselves that does not call on the leviathan necessarily if they're trying to help themselves or is that there is different kinds of chaos magic meaning there's light chaos magic we use the light to create chaos. And then there's Leviathan chaos magic, where you use the Leviathan to harm someone, to give them blood, to feed them someone else's blood, basically, someone else's energy. And is blood and energy synonymous? Like, if I'm talking about blood, are we also talking about the energy? Because... Like, for example, there are people who have red undertones in their skin like myself, you know, who are like more indigenous to the land. Then there are people who have blue undertones in their skin. They're not quite like indigenous. And I feel like that's probably a really good way to tell whether somebody is indigenous or not indigenous if they have red undertones or if they have blue undertones. Because blue undertones means that the the blood has gone out from you when you turn blue. And when you turn, you know, when you're red, you're flush with that blood. It's flushing to the surface. Um. Anyway, that's another thought I had. But it was something I was going to ask in relation to determining which is light and which is dark. Are there better terms than light and dark to use? Is light and dark the easiest way for us to understand what's going on here? Okay, so is it that the Most High does actually need us to assist in this, especially the women, because... Or just everyone really who can at least conquer the um the leviathan within them that is their actual shadow that is that is their actual um that is their actual blood sacrifice 
that was taken from them and fed to the lives and they have to come as energy and they have to conquer that thing in order to get out of that energy and if they don't conquer that thing to get out of that energy they are forever bound into this dark um this dark energy is allowed to just continually feed on them because they have not closed all those doors is that a good way to understand this okay I have some more personal questions I'll ask later. Oh, I know I was going to ask. So when we engage with dealing with the water, is there a way, can we command the dark mother away from us? Meaning, can we just command her away to crawl on her belly and to go away? Especially like, you know, usually I go and I walk on the beach and all of that. Um, I don't want that to be like, oh, she's going to come, whatever, whatever, Freddy Krueger style crap. So, you know, can we just, with our intentions, banish her out of our presence if we have dealt with our shadow and detached her from us? And then is it a good idea to do a cord cutting ritual in the water somehow, even if it's a bathtub with some salt water, whatever, to cut the cords um to do cord cutting rituals because even if we have dealt with our shadow, if we didn't cut the cords, um, maybe um, when you deal with your shadow, she can't um, she can't necessarily feed off of your energy, so that's starving her out on one level. But when you cut the cords, you actually banish her from your presence, so you don't have this tether on you where these people can continue to follow you around. And this is more like a thing that could be seen in the spiritual realm. So you know how they say they have you have a silver rope. And when you go astral tra traveling, you have to hold on to that silver rope. Would this cut that silver rope in the physical realm so that she can't track you? When you go into the astral realm, it's different. That's a, that You want to have that silver rope because that keeps you connected with the light mother. But in the physical realm, you have a rope that keeps you connected with the leviathan so you want to get rid of that thing that has you connected to the leviathan and reinforce your connection with the light mother which would be lilith yeah i think that's it you guys because the only person to ever ask for blood is the leviathan Nobody else asks for blood. So anybody who's asking for blood sacrifices is working with this Leviathan. And what I think is that these higher level entities, all of these demons, they didn't necessarily ask for blood, but they were turned into demons. Like these would be like all of these people who did make these blood contracts. They go when when they go to the other side, they become demons and they are feeding her with the blood that they're able to get from all of these contracts different ones big and small and so in order to um you know get rid of this you have to deal with your shadow that cuts off her from from using you as an energy source because because we were born through that ring of fire we were born with a connection to the leviathan because she doesn't actually, um, that's how she can, that's how she can birth without having intercourse because she is automatically placing her claim on us due to the sin that she caused from Eve. And so we have to choose to remove that connection with her through dealing with our shadow and then through the baptism. Oh my freaking goodness. The baptism is cutting the cord. The baptism of the light, not the baptism of the dark. The baptism of the dark reconnects the cord. But the baptism of the light cuts the cord. Oh my freaking goodness. Wow. And so that's what they do with the Orthodox. They're cutting this cord with the Leviathan. And that's why the Leviathan has a problem with the Orthodox. Because they're always cutting the cords with this thing. Every week when you go to church, you are cutting the cords with the Leviathan. 
They can't feed on you. They can't track you. They can't anything. When you have that baptism, that's a permanent crossing out. And then you go to, uh, um, what is it called? Confession to deal with your shadow. That's all it is, is a way of dealing, publicly dealing with your shadow because you're confessing it to the priest. So you're dealing with your shadow. Oh my freaking goodness. So our brother left us this whole thing, told him to go out and preach all of this stuff. And then they took it and they, they somehow corrupted it so they could give it back to the Leviathan because they knew this is what we were doing. This is what we were doing. And they turned around and gave it back to the Leviathan by corrupting it and turn everything into a blood ritual. You know, baptism, I mean, um, communion is not a blood ritual. It's a bloodless, it's a bloodless sacrifice. It's bloodless. That's the whole point of using the wine. Because this also proves that Abel's sacrifice would have been accepted had Abel just taken it. But he didn't want to take the sacrifice. He wanted it to be accepted the same, I mean, Cain. He wanted... Cain sacrifice was would have been worthy. It's just that he wanted his sacrifice to be accepted the same way Abel's sacrifice was accepted. And it couldn't be. Because when you use the herbs return to the earth, the herbs the, the smell once it goes out is gone. It goes out into the ether, is absorbed into the ether. Smells are, but Plants can't be absorbed into the ether. It doesn't work like that. And that was the problem. He wanted his sacrifice to be absorbed into the ether. And it couldn't be because it's herbs. Herbs got to return to the earth. Just like we are. We are made from the earth. We return to the earth. Our bodies, but our spirits don't have to. Oh my goodness. And the lake of fire is the, the ring of fire. So that's the rebirth. So we, these things don't want to have to be sent back through to be reborn. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, y'all. These, um, I'm going to have to put some bug spray on. I'm going to have to move. Um, ah. I am in the woods. So, yeah, these mosquitoes are getting me. You would think they wouldn't be out here this early. Good God Almighty. Okay. So, not only do we need to deal with our shadow, we need to cut our cords. And when we cut the cord, she's no longer able to feed off us or track us. And then we can use one of these bioengineering devices to keep her minions from tracking us, figuring out where we are, whatever. They've been doing this for a long time. They know how to get people back who have been, um, who have cut the cord. That is why you have to constantly go to church. That's the whole point of going to church is because every week you're cutting that cord. Like when that, when that demon came into the church found me and came into the church and tried to throw me off that's because they they have the ability to take on these empty vessels and go into these churches and that's why we need these different um protection sigils like saint benedictus symbol to banish all the demons i, I mean i need one of those you know and the atlantean symbol Okay. Thank you so much for answering these questions. I feel like I have a better understanding of what's going on. I need to do some more research so that I can get these questions down because there's still some more stuff that's kind of lingering, but um, I'm not going to make this video too long. And again, I want to um, you know, know if I have authorization, access, permission to share this video on the internet so people can understand what's going on. There's a yes for that. Um, also, to make sure I have authorization from the Most High to conduct research in this manner. Y'all see it? Yes. 
and um of course thank the most high for allowing you to speak with me and um thank you for all of your hard work i appreciate everything that you're doing and as the mother the birther of our savior um i definitely thank you for enduring that because that must have been some kind of trial to go through um i can only imagine um and so thank you for being with us thank you for supporting us um and i'll see you later shalom shalom all right everybody y'all got to download with me so we'll see you in the next video shalom